with us today, we have Brian Mahone from Keller Stonebreaker. Brian, why don't you say hello? Hi, everybody. This is Brian Mahone at Keller Stonebreaker. I'm a, a senior proactive uh, risk executive with the firm focused on cyber. Um, been doing this for about four years uh, for uh, technology, life science, and, and all industries in terms of cyber. Um, also have uh, been published in the American Bar Association and, and some other uh, tech and, and innovative uh, magazines. I don't have any cool uh, skateboards behind me today. I just moved, but I'm very happy to be here and, and speak to you guys. So thanks for joining. Thank you, Brian. It takes a couple of years to get those walls decorated, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. And then our fourth one, get cyber liability insurance. Um, that's why we have Brian here today. Brian's going to cover this a lot in detail um, because not all policies are created equal. Uh, Brian, help us out with this. What you got? That is true, Jason, and, and thank you. So when you're talking cyber liability insurance, the, the first thing I want you to think of is a, a flood in your house. You know, when you have a flood in your house, you know you need to call a company like Roto-Rooter. You know, they're going to come out and, and suck the water out. They're going to put those industrial fans in to dry out the area, uh, maybe do some some carpet or mold removal and, and remediate the, the situation. Um, with uh, a data breach, it, it's not quite as simple. So with a, a data breach, the first thing that's going to happen is you need to figure out you know, what happened and to what extent. So a data forensics person comes out and figures out, hey, uh, this data was taken, it's affected this many people. You know, they charge more than your favorite lawyer in, in your town, you know, $500 an hour or something. Uh, from there, you need to notify who was breached, um, provide credit monitoring services to them to protect them. Oh, and by the way, you're in the news for a data breach, so now you need a PR firm to, to smooth things over with your customers. And uh, you might need a, a legal representative specific to data breaches to, to work uh, with local government and, and figure out the fines and penalties and potential uh, going to court. So what a, a cyber insurance policy does is more or less provide all of those post-breach service providers. So, you know, the, the post-breach service providers really fall into uh, this first party column you see here on, on the screen. Um, so it's important to note cyber insurance is a, is a financial loss coverage. You know, it's, it's not really covering, you know, if somebody gets physically hurt, um, or uh, physical damage, it, it's truly uh, balance sheet protection. Um, and as Jason mentioned earlier, you know, a ton of these data breaches are, are likely going to be some sort of ransomware extortion event or uh, a cybercrime phishing, social engineering, email uh, spoofing scenario. And when you're, when you're looking at the policy in general, I mean, you're getting, you're getting post-breach services and pre-breach services. So all those things I just described with the, um, you know, comparing that to your house flooding is the post-breach services, all of those service providers. Um, when, you're, when you're thinking of the three different parts, it's really cyber crime, first party, and third party. So first party is anything um, that is going to affect you. You're the policy holder. Uh, you're the first party. There's a there's a data breach, and you can't do business. Maybe you can't access your computer systems. Um, maybe you can't generate invoices. It, it doesn't really matter. Those are all first party uh, coverages. Um, so uh, you need the security and part in all the different crazy language. The cyber insurance really is the kind of the wild wild west of insurance. You know, there's not kind of standard coverages or standard terminology or definitions. It varies by carrier to carrier. Um, so the, the first party, the security breach is, is all of those uh, post breach response services. Business income is, is to help um, pay for you know your overhead and your rent and your salary and your payroll, your insurance costs when you do have that downtime because of a data breach. Um, contingent business interruption, maybe uh, somebody else, maybe a, a key supplier or key partner, they have a data breach and you can't do this business because they're shut down for a data breach. You could have coverage for that. Um, and and uh, on the third party side, 
really these are difficult to prove, which is why less data breaches are kind of third party in nature. But this is when um, your vendor, your supplier, uh, your partner, your third party has a data breach and, and uh, they're trying to claim it was your fault. So that security breach liability information, security network breach liability, um, that would, would fall in there. Uh, the content web publishing multimedia, I mean, every company nowadays really has a website, has social media, they're blogging, they're interacting on the internet. Uh, they might have product reviews, think of, um, maybe like an Amazon uh, product review. Um, this kind of brings that advertising and, and injury liability into the 21st century. Uh, say, you know, someone says, so, someone in your company says something bad about a, a competitor's product online. Uh, you could have uh, coverage under your cyber policy for something like that in, in the multimedia liability. And then, uh, the privacy liability, of course, um, you know, the, the big three, the personal health information, personal financial information, personally identifiable information. Um, if your company is responsible for any of those types of information being released, that is that third party privacy liability. So when you're buying one of these policies, um, it's important to, to obviously have those three different coverages, first, third, and crime. Uh, but no two policies are the same, as Jason alluded to. And these are just some uh, questions to maybe consider if, if, you, if you do have a policy or you're thinking about getting one. Um, oftentimes you might have, a, say, a million dollar policy, but it's, it only has a quarter million dollars worth of phishing, social engineering, cyber crime type coverage. Um, so it's, it's sublimited, or maybe um, the legal defense costs are, are within the data breach uh, uh, limits. You'd want them outside, so that's broader coverage. Maybe you have uh, an in-house general counsel, or maybe your, your favorite attorney down the street uh, want, that you want to help you in the event of a data breach. It's possible that your cyber insurance policy won't let you work with them. A lot of times, insurance companies reserve the right uh, to have to have say in legal counsel, or more or less appoint uh, the the professional that will be uh, fighting the lawsuit. Uh, say you have a, a rogue employee, someone that wants to take you down from the inside out, a, a disgruntled employee. Maybe a cyber insurance policy would cover that. Maybe it wouldn't. That's a question you've got to ask. Uh, also, non-electronic -elect data breaches. Uh, how many uh, of your offices are, are cleaned by some commercial cleaning company outside, and you know an employee could leave, uh, you know, a password information. You know, a lot of uh, smaller businesses might have a sticky note with their top passwords. Leave it out on their desk, and a janitor swipes that, and a data breach occurs that way. I mean, that's not necessarily electronic. It's kind of a non -elect non-electronic data breach, but it's definitely a data breach. Uh, so some cyber insurance policies uh, may or may not cover that. So you you have the post breach services I just went through. You know, all of those service providers that will uh, come to your aid if there is a data breach, but insurance cyber insurance policies also come with post breach or pre breach services excuse me so a lot of these things were things that that jason mentioned previously um you know you might get a policy and an offer uh it comes with a, a pre breach cybersecurity portal where you can log in and get all sorts of of content um to a plan the the likelihood or the severity of a data breach do data breach response planning uh, perhaps access some phishing and cybersecurity training and possibly some free IT consulting with it so you know other than the obvious reasons why would you consider buying cyber insurance I mean really first and foremost simply applying is a great activity to figure figure out where you're at. It's, it's a good risk management uh, cybersecurity exercise. They, these um, cyber insurance underwriters ask a ton of questions on um, your, your controls, your physical security controls that are in place, uh, some of the policies and procedures, you know, the, the multi uh, dual factor authentication, you know, your, your wire transfer payment uh, procedures. Uh, if you you know, have employee laptops encrypted, things of that nature. 
Uh, number two is you're likely not covered. Uh, you know, business general liability and business owners packages and commercial insurance packages have been around for decades and decades and decades. They they are not designed to cover a data breach. They are, are bodily injury and, and property damage coverage, usually only. Um, data breaches, again, is more of a financial loss coverage. Uh, number three is it's it's affordable. It's come down in price quite a bit the last, I'd say, five years. I mean, this product has only been around for 20 years or so, uh, so it's probably a lot uh, more inexpensive than you think it would be. Uh, again, you've probably heard of uh, GDPR, um, the Data Privacy Protection Act in, in Europe. California's got its own law. New York has a, a similar law. Pretty much all 50 states have some sort of data breach law. Uh, they all tell you what uh, it constitutes as the definition of a data breach differently, and the notification requirements are all different, uh, but it's likely uh, required wherever you are. Uh, also may be required by contract. Uh, a ton of the IT uh, companies I work with in the government contracting space and even the private uh, industry are requiring uh, certain cyber insurance limits um, not wouldn't be surprised if if the finance industry and healthcare industry follow suit uh, quite quickly here. Uh, of course, accidents happen. You know, it just takes one employee clicking on an uh, email phishing link to uh, get that uh, you know malware installed onto your computer systems. And really, if you have a policy, it kind of streamlines the whole process if a data breach happens. You know you need to call your broker, your insurance carrier. They release and, and allocate all of those uh, data breach uh, service providers, like the forensics people, the lawyers, the PR firms, the, the credit monitoring, the call center people. All of that is, is, is already taken care of. So I often joke, you know, looking at cyber insurance and, and data breach liability uh, is kind of like preparing for the, the diapers or changing the diapers of your first kid. You know, you're not really sure how many baby products to buy. You know, it's really easy to overspend. You're not really sure what, what you're going to use. Um, but if, if you underspend, it's going to get messy. Same thing is true with data breaches. It's, it's a black box and uh, wanted to, to walk you through a tool uh, to, to create a, more of a clear picture of, of, of this black box of, well, you know, how much or where do I start? So this is a tool from uh, an insurance carrier that, that's pretty innovative in, in the cyber insurance space. It's called Chubb. Uh, they've been, been doing this for about 20 years. And uh, this, this graph at the bottom is, is identical to the FBI data that uh, Jason shared earlier. It's just the, the frequency and amount of, of insurance, uh, cyber insurance claims over you know, the, the last, I guess, two decades or so. So obviously increasing in more recent times. But we're going to pretend we're we're an accounting firm here and and look at this data. And what this is telling us is that your, if your company has a data breach, you know, half of the data breaches will hit your server. You know, 70 percent are going to come from outside your company, external in nature. About uh, 30 percent or so are going to be that social engineering. Uh, they're going to trick somebody that that email spoofing type of type of event. Uh, only 19 percent will be kind of a traditional hack and another 18 percent will be a, a, a malware uh, of some sort. Uh, 12 percent human error. So looking at, so yeah, we're a three million dollar accounting firm uh, looking at, you know, what's the risk? So uh, and this just gives an, an estimate, and it's, it's better than nothing. So say the average $3 million sized accounting firm has about 5,000 records, client records, uh, maybe personal financial information, and we're, that creates a risk of about $600,000, maybe half a million dollar in, in cyber risk. Uh, a lot of, the, of that cost, again, is going to be the data forensics and, and data uh, restoration part of the data breach. So what are your, your peers and your competitors doing in this regard? So 
we're we're again a professional service firm, maybe an accounting firm, under $25 million in revenue. We're in the US. Most of, of your peers and competitors are, are buying some sort of insurance policy between a quarter million dollars and one million dollars. Some are getting to two and three million dollars. Uh, their deductible is, is likely going to be less than ten thousand dollars. So there's a data breach. They've got to pay ten grand, and everything's taken care of. Um, you know, their their balance sheet's protected. The insurance company is is going to respond. Uh, only a small percentage have above a ten thousand dollar deductible. So really, next steps. I'll hand it back over to Jason, and, and we're going to get uh, homework out to you guys and, and some quick Q&A. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you. So contact information's here. Uh, we will be sending a follow-up email that will include the recording and that uh, worksheet that...